Today I have an album review and it is from one of my favorite artists of all time. That is Alice Cooper. This is his 29th studio album and it's called Road, released on August 25th, 2023 through Air Music Records. Uh, this is probably one of my most anticipated albums of the year. His last album was two years ago it's called uh, Detroit Stories. I reviewed it uh, back then two years ago. I'll link it at the end. Um, he recorded the album live in the studio with no overdubs, so it's kind of a live album if you think about it, but just in the studio. Uh, the album was produced by Bob Ezrin, and um, he uh, recorded it with his touring band, and that includes uh, Nita Strauss, uh, who recently put out an album, Ryan Roxy, a guitarist who also played in Slash the Snake Pit in the past, another guitarist, uh, Tommy Henriksen, uh, he was in Hollywood P Vampires and Warlock. Bass player Chuck Garrick, uh, he was the former bassist for L.A. Guns and Dio. And drummer Glenn Sobel, uh, he's been with Alice for over 10 years. So he has this all-star band. He already released uh, three singles, which I will talk about as I go through the songs. And the album is also a concept album about being on the road, hence uh, the name of the album. Let me read a quote from Fred Thomas of All Music. He said... Primarily killer and only a little bit of filler with Alice tapping into the power he harnessed in his younger days to create a surprisingly inspired collection of new material. And I can agree with that. Um, it's a very good album in general. There is a little bit of filler. I'll talk about that later. So if you have been following Alice Cooper for years, you will know he likes to adapt his sound to whatever music is trending for that period. So, for example, in the early 80s, he uh, went New Wave. He had a few albums out. You may remember the song, We're All Clones. In the mid-80s, he went metal. And then in the late 80s, he went glam. That was his most popular period. Uh, he had that music video for Poison. Later, he went uh, industrial. He had uh, two albums, uh, like Brutal Planet and Dragon Town. But it was sometimes in the 2000s, he just decided he would go back to his classic sound uh, that had worked for him. So... The last little studio album that I, I just showed you was Detroit Stories. Uh, this one was paying homage to uh, the music of Detroit. That was a good album. And uh, on that one, he had some of the former members of his his original band. Uh, and they made a few appearances. And then later, he released uh, a live album called uh, Live at the Astro Turf. This one here. And this one had the former members from the Alice Cooper band. So it was kind of like a reunion live show. But now uh, he did something completely different. Uh, he's just focusing on his current touring band. So the album is about being on the road. All the songs are related to that particular topic. Uh, the sound in general is mostly classic Alice Cooper. There are a few nods to some of his other periods. I will mention that as I get through the songs. And there are a few songs in the album that I thought were kind of filler. So I will uh, mention them as I get to them. So the album is available in different formats. Uh, you got vinyl and CD. Um, I was actually going to order the CD with the DVD, but uh, the shipping was like really expensive and it was like double the price of the CD. So I had to cancel my Amazon order and I ordered the single CD instead. Uh, that's going to arrive in a few days. So uh, I just wanted to get this review out uh, right away. The opening track is I'm Alice. Uh, this is one of the singles. It's a throwback to the classic sound of the 70s. Uh, the vocals are almost like spoken, but he delivers them perfectly. Uh, you know, it was a song that kind of reminded me of that like Billion Dollar Babies era. There's like a part where he speaks uh, like this spoken word part, and it reminded me of like Vincent Price from the Welcome to My Nightmare album. Welcome to the show is the second song, another single. It's an energetic rock song about this stage show. The backing vocals and the chorus sound very good, and um, the song has this classic Alice Cooper feel. Um, Alice kind of does this like master of ceremonies of vocal part, and the song is uh, very good. All Over the World, another uh, song about uh, the band and all the cities they visited while touring the world. Uh, it's a good song. They use like this horn section. Um, I, it added to the fullness of the sound, and I thought it was a type of song. Probably could have been on like the, the Detroit Stories album. Uh, overall, it's a decent album cut. I think it's very catchy. Then again, most of the songs on this album are very catchy. Um, I listened to it three times already, and uh, most of these songs do stick with you. Then Dead Don't Dance is one of the heavier songs in the album. It kind of has this kind of sludgy metal type of guitar riff. It sounds uh, very good, and... 
the overall feel of the song is maybe something like his like glam metal period. Uh, the guitar riff is very catchy. It's another song I enjoyed a lot. And let me also mention that the bass guitar sounds very good on the song, and the guitar solo is one of the better ones on the album. Go Away is a fun song about a girl who's kind of crazy and won't leave him alone. I would compare this to maybe a song like Poison or maybe even like Nurse Rosetta from the album, From the Inside. It's a straightforward, a hard rock song with some pretty cool guitar work. Again, it's an enjoyable song, and so far this album has been pretty solid. Next, we have the song White Line Frankenstein. So, let me give you a pop quiz. So, Alice Cooper has had two other songs with the title or the word Frankenstein in the title. What are they? Put them in the comments. And uh, let's talk about this song now. So, this song has Tom Morello on it. Um, one of the heavier songs, it's kind of more of this heavy metal type of guitar riff. But the guitar solo uh, sounds like Tom Morello. So, when you hear it, you know, you're going to think, you know, that's Tom you know, on the solo, so it's a good song and I like it a lot. Then the next song is called Big Boots. Um, this is where the album takes a little bit of a dip. Uh, the song's not bad, it just has that, it doesn't have the same like caliber as the previous songs I was talking about. It has a sound like the glam rock of the 70s, like the New York Dolls, that type of sound. And the title in the, of the song and the chorus has like one of those like innuendos, the kind of like you might hear like an ACDC song or something like that. I think it's okay, but it might be like a little bit of like a filler type of song. Then Rules of the Road is a good song. I would say better than the one right before. It's a straightforward rock song. It has the theatrical sound. Alice is singing about the rock and roll lifestyle. There's even one part where he references like the 27 Club. So I think it's a fun song. Better than or one of the better ones from the second half of the album. Then there is The Big Goodbye. This is the heaviest song in the album. It's like one of those songs that sounds like something from either Brutal Planet or Dragon Town. It has that industrial metal type of sound. Very good song. It's enjoyable and the lyrics are entertaining. Road Rats Forever. It's another song that reminds me of the glam rock of the 70s, maybe some 80s rock. Another song about being on the road. It's a very fun song and it's very catchy. Baby, Please Don't Go. This is one of the songs that brings the album down a bit. It's a ballad. It sounds like it could have been on one of his glam metal albums like Trash or Hey Stupid. Uh, it's just not as good. It's sort of a country song. I don't know. Maybe it will grow on me. But I'm going to call this a filler track at this point. Then there's 100 More Miles. Uh, this is one of those classic like haunting songs. Uh, in the style of like classics like Steven or The Ballad of Dwight Fry. Song is very good. I know Alice likes to uh, end many of his albums with this type of song. So, probably one of my favorite songs from the album. And the final song is called uh, "Magic Bus." It's a cover song originally by The Who. It's okay. I think it could have been left off the album. I think it, it does fit within the context of the album, but it has some pretty cool parts. There's like this one drum part, like it's kind of like this like Keith Moon style drum uh, section at the end. So I like that. And then. This is the only song where you do hear like the crowd uh, in the background. But otherwise, I think I thought it was okay. So in conclusion, let me wrap this up. Uh, this is definitely a very good album. Classic Alice Cooper. And it's good to see he's still releasing albums at this age. Uh, so he claims he's never going to retire. He's just going to continue to tour, make albums until it is physically impossible for him to do so. So... I think this album might be a little better than Detroit Stories. It's a solid album. Just a little bit of filler towards the second half of the album. I'll give this an 8 out of 10. And I'm sure I will be playing this one often, uh, you know, when I get it in the mail. So that's all. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, check out my review of Detroit Stories from two years ago. I'm going to link that right here. Uh, please like this video. It helps me with the algorithm. Please subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you in the next one.